All praises to the Most High Heavenly Father, Most High Allah Aim Yao, Most High Allah Aim of Abram, Yah Sakach, Yah Gakub. Are we in the New Covenant, Part Two of Four? Have the children of Israel returned to the Most High with their whole heart and the law written in their inward parts? So we covered verse 31 and 32 of Jeremiah chapter 31 in part one. We're just going to read those and go right into 33. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So have the children of Israel returned to the Most High with their whole heart and the law written in their inward parts. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 24 and verse 7. Just to get a little more understanding on this covenant. It says, And I will give them an heart to know me that I am Yahweh, and they shall be my people, and I will be their Allah aim, for they shall return to, unto me with their whole heart. So let's go to Matthew. Let's see what Yahushai said, um, what Christ's words are here at Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36. He, it says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Yahushai said unto him, Thou shalt love Adonai thy Allah aim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So where did Yahushua Mashe get this from? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter six and verse four. It says, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Allah aim is one Yahweh, and thou shalt love Yahweh thy Allah aim with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. All right? It says, And these words which I command thee shall be in thine heart. So Yahushua Mashiach was taking this directly from the Torah. Let's go to what that second commandment was. Let's look at that one more time. Matthew chapter 22 and 39. And the second like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Where did he get that from? Let's go to Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. And that says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am Yahweh. So once again, Yahushua went directly into the Torah, the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, in stating what the greatest laws were. So now let's go into Matthew chapter 5. In verse 17, and get Christ's words about this law. He said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Fulfill what? Let's go to Luke chapter 24 and verse 44. And that says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So he came to fulfill the things that were written about him. But remember, let's go back to Matthew chapter five and verse 17, where his words were. He said, think not that I am come to destroy the law 
or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So he came to fulfill the things that were written concerning him. But these law, statutes and commandments in verse 18, he said, for verily I say to you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. He said, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So let's go to Hebrews. Let's see what Paul said. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20, he said, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead are Adonai, Yao Shai, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Hamashek Yahushai, to whom be glory forever and ever among. So let's go into doing the Most High's will here. What is his will? Let's go to Psalms and let's look at verse 40 and verse 8. It says, I delight to do thy will, O my Allah, yea, the, the law is in my heart. So his will is the laws that he gave us. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 14, or excuse me, verse 4. It says, For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other God's and his heart was not perfect with Yao his Allah aim, as was the heart of his of David his father. So Solomon's heart was turned away to other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Most High, as was David's. In his heart, he was perfect. So let's focus on that. David's heart was perfect. But what happened? Didn't David take another man's uh, wife, Bathsheba? Didn't he have another man killed and have a, a child by that woman? So how was David's heart perfect? Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 15 and verse 5. It says, because David did that which was right in the eyes of Yahweh and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him, all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. So yes, David had a matter that we just mentioned. But aside from that, he did everything that the Most High commanded him to do. And in, in the Most High's sight, his heart was perfect. As we just read in 1 Kings 11 and 4. So what does it mean to have a perfect heart? It means that when we keep these law, statutes and commandments to the best of our ability, the most high sees us as perfect because of the effort that we exert in doing the things that are pleasing to him that he commands us to do. Let's go to Philippians chapter four and verse 13, because a lot of Christians say the law has been done away with. There's no way you can keep the law, the law, the law. It's impossible to keep. Well, what did he say here? The apostle Paul said it, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Hamashiach, which strengtheneth me. So you can do all things, especially the things that his father commanded you to do. So what did Yahusha say? Let's go back to Matthew. Chapter five. Let's get Christ's words again. With everything that we've just seen, he said in 48, be ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which in heaven is perfect. So you can do all things through Yahushua Mashiach. You can do all things through Christ. 
So therefore, he's commanding you to be perfect. He's commanding you to keep these law, statutes and commandments. He said that these one jot or one tittle would not pass. And that your righteousness would have to exceed the scribes and the Pharisees in order for you to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So now let's go into Exodus chapter 20, excuse me, 18 and verse 20. It says, and you shall teach them ordinances and laws and shall show them the way wherein they must walk and the work they must do. So you must be teaching and keeping these laws. What did James say? Let's go to James chapter one. Let's see what James said. In one and 22, he said, be ye doers of the word. What is the word? The law, statutes and commandments. Okay. And not hearers only deceiving your own selves. For if anyone, any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass, looking in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You forgot what your own face looked like. But whoso looketh unto the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So we just read in Exodus chapter 18 and 20, the work that we must do, these ordinances and laws. That's the perfect law of liberty. Because what does it do? It frees us from sin and death. And we know that sin, pursuant to 1 John 3 and 4, sin is a transgression of law. Let's get that real quick. Just for content. Prove all things. 1 John 3 and 4. Who com whoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. Simple. Straightforward. Now, what are some of the laws that we need to keep? Right. We have a moral law. We have a civil law. We have a ceremonial law and we have a dietary law. OK, let's talk about one of the ceremonial laws that we're commanded to keep in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 11. It says, and thus you shall eat it with your loins girded and your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. I will smite the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast against the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be to you for a memorial and you shall keep it a feast to your oath throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. So we just talked about Exodus 18 and 20, these ordinances and laws, right? So this is an ordinance, Passover. Let's go to the next chapter, 13 and verse 17. It says, and it came to pass. Uh, actually, yeah, we can do. Let's go to Exodus 13 and 7, actually. It says, unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall be no leavened bread be seen with thee. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And you shall show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of what Yahweh did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. And it shall be for a sign unto you upon your hand and for a memorial between your eyes that Yahweh's law may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand has Yahweh brought you out of Egypt. You shall therefore keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. So this is a perpetual ordinance. It is a memorial between us and the Most High. You so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans of Negro descent. You are the children of Israel. And the Most High has a covenant. And we're talking about that covenant. And part of that covenant 
is the law, statutes, and commandments that he gave. And this is one of the ordinances of the ceremonial laws. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 18. And let's look at verse 4. It says, You shall do my judgments and shall keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am Yahweh, your Allah aim. You shall keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am Yahweh. Let's jump down to 30. It says, Therefore you shall keep mine ordinance that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves. I am Yahweh, your Allah ain't. So what, what is one of these other ordinances that we have to keep every year? Let's go to Leviticus chapter 23 and let's look at 33. It says, and Yahweh spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel saying, the 15th day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto Yahweh. The first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offering of fire unto Yahweh. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation to you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. It is a solemn assembly, and you shall do no servile work therein. So we can see that there's offerings that are made here. Well, you know, we have we have the ransom sacrifice, Yahshua Mashek, so we don't have to do that offering, but we do have to keep that Sabbath, right? And for seven days, you're basically living in tents. And when you go into verse 37, it says, These are the feast of Yahweh, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering by fire unto Yahweh, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice, drink offerings, everything upon his day, besides the Sabbath of Yahweh. And besides your gifts and besides your vows and besides your freewill offerings, which you will give unto Yahweh, it says, And the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast unto Yahweh seven days. And on the first day shall be a Sabbath, and the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. So on the first and the eighth day, it's a day of rest. But ultimately, you're living in tents or booths, Right? And in verse 40, it says, you shall take on the first day the boughs of the goodly trees, palms, branches of palm trees, boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before Yahweh, your Allah aim, seven days. He said, you shall keep it a feast unto Yahweh seven days in a year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh, your Allah ain't. So this whole chapter, Leviticus 23, outlines the feasts that are dedicated to the Most High. Let's go into Zechariah chapter 14 because you think, oh, that happened back then. That's done away with, right? That's what Christianity will teach you. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 6. It says, and it shall come to pass, right? And this is future eschatology or prophecy for what will happen in the end times when the kingdom is now on this earth. What will be happening in the kingdom is happening here in Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 16. So this is after Armageddon. This is in the kingdom and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles that we just read in Leviticus 23. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth to Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite the heathen that come up to not keep the Feast of Tabernacles. 
This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So we can see the Feast of Tabernacles being kept even in the kingdom. So this is, <laughs> we read it. It was forever. It was an ordinance that was given forever, right? To be kept in its season every year and it will be kept in the kingdom. Let's go to let's go to Jeremiah chapter 32. Let's learn a little bit more about this covenant. Let's go to 32 and 38. It says, and they shall be my people and I will be their Allah aim and I will give them one heart and one way that may, they may fear me forever for the good of them and their children after them. So the most high is doing this for our good. So to answer that question that we asked, the question was, have the children of Israel returned to the most high with their whole heart and the law written in their inward parts? How many people do you see keeping uh, Passover? How many people do you see keeping the Feast of Tabernacles? How many people do you see keeping a dietary law, not eating shrimp, crab, lobster, um, bottom feeders that Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14 tell us not to eat? How many people do you see that are keeping the Sabbath? I mean, that's the fourth commandment, right? It comes before murder and honoring your father and your mother, adultery, coveting, bearing false witness. You know, it's, it's right after, you know, the Most High's uh, sovereignty, not having any, any other gods before him, not taking his name in vain or, or making any graven image. Number four, who, who do you see keeping the Sabbath? Shabbat Shalom, by the way, for all of those um, of Israel that are keeping it today. But do we really see that? Do we see the children of Israel return to the Most High with their whole heart and the law written in their inward parts? I would say absolutely not at this time. So that's definitely a strike against us being in the new covenant at this moment. So now the next question is, are the children of Israel still teaching one another to know the most high? Why am I asking this question? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 31 and 33, where uh, we were because he said in 34, and they will, they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Yao, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yao, for I will I'll stop right there. So are the children of Israel still teaching one another to know the most high? Let's go to Acts chapter 20 and verse 20. We can take it back to the time of Paul. We know that uh, the death, burial, resurrection of Christ had already happened. Okay, what's going on here in Acts 20, 20? He said, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. So Paul was teaching after the death, burial, and resurrection of Masha Galshai, the world calls Christ. So clearly we can see teaching going on. So we know that Paul wasn't in the new covenant at this time. Let's see what's going on now. Let's go to Hebrews chapter five, verse 12. Let's look again at Paul. It says, for when the time you ought to be teachers... You have need that one teach you again the first principles of the oracles of Allah aim, which are become as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So we see a lot of that. There's a lot of people that are coming out of Christianity, learning the first oracles or the first laws of the Most High, the, the elementary things that we should be doing and not doing. So we see that teaching work is still going on. Let's go to Acts chapter 20, 28 and verse 23. It says, and when they had appointed him a day, 
there came many to join him in him into his lodging to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of Allah aim persuading them concerning Yahu Shai both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening so we see Paul teaching out of the law and out of the prophets from morning to evening and persuading them concerning Yahu Shai so he was teaching them the law statutes and commandments in the faith of Yahushai. And it says in verse 24, and some believe the things which were spoken and some believe not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Spirit of Isaiah, the prophet unto our fathers, saying, go unto this people and say, hearing you shall hear, and you shall not understand, and seeing you, sh you shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross and their ears are of dull hearing and their eyes have they closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart that they should be converted and I should heal them. So where did he get this from in Isaiah? Because there's a lot of people who have that mentality in this day and time. So there's still a lot of teaching going on. He said in Isaiah 6 and 9, and he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. What did y'all shy my shake? What did Christ say? Matthew chapter 13 and verse 15. He said, for this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are of dull hearing and their eyes have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted that I should heal them. So we see y'all Shah was reading Isaiah. Paul was <laughs> definitely in Isaiah, a Pharisee of Pharisees. Um, but the point here is there's still a great teaching work on and, and people are not listening. It's the whole point. They're stuck in Christianity. They're stuck in these doctrines of men. They're not actually reading the Bible. They're not familiar with who the people of this book are, as a matter of fact, you so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans. So let's go into uh, John chapter 12. And verse 49 says, for I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me, he gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is everlasting whatsoever. I speak, therefore, even as the father said unto me, so I speak. See, Christianity teaches you that Yahusha came with his own set of rules, his own set of laws. And when in actuality, According to here in verse 49, it says he has not spoken of himself. He only spoke what the father gave him commandment to say. And he spoke his father's commandments. So let's go to John chapter 15 and verse 10. What did he say there? He said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. So he only did what his father commanded and he kept those things and taught them unlike Christianity. Let's go to first John chapter two in verse three, it says, and hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily, the love of Allah aim is perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walks. So if you say you know Christ, you need to be walking the way he was walking. You need to be keeping the law, statutes, and commandments that he kept. In the faith of Hamashiach Yahushai. So it's a simple thing here, but we have to re reiterate it. But what was what was Yahusha's sentiment in reference to those 
who did not keep his law, statutes and commandments. Um, it says here in Matthew chapter seven and verse 24, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will, which we know to be the laws, according to Psalms chapter 40 and verse eight, we just read it. He said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the laws of my father, which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and cast out devils? And in that and, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So we just read in 1 John 2 and 3, if we say that we know him, we keep his commandments. If you say that you know him and don't keep his commandments, that you're a liar and the truth is not in you. So here we are. This is what Yahusha is telling you. He's saying that you will profess that you've done all of these things in his name. In the name of Jesus. And he will say that I never knew you. Get away from me. Because you're not keeping these law statutes and commandments. You're working iniquity. You're transgressing the law. You are a sinner. Your heart is not perfect with my father. So to make it clear, the answer to the question, are the children of Israel still teaching one another to know the most high? Absolutely. So according to verse 34 of Jeremiah chapter 31, let's go back there. Let's read it. And they shall teach no more his net. No, they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Yahoo, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahoo. Nah, we're not there yet. So, how can we be in the new covenant? We're going to ask the last question for this part, because this is part two of four. Are the children of Israel still departing from the Most High? Let's go to Jeremiah 32 and verse 40. Because it says here, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that they that I will not turn away from them to do good. And I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. So we're, if we're in this new covenant we won't be departing from the Most High. Are the children of Israel still departing? You so-called Blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans of Negro descent. Are you still departing from the Most High? Let's go into 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2. Or 4 and verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressively or expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Like the law is done away with. <laughs> let's go to let's go to Second Thessalonians two and three. Second Thessalonians two and three. It says, "Let no man deceive you by any means." For that day shall not come except there be there come a falling away first and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So hold on. What do we just look at in first John three and four? Sin is the transgression of the law. So that means this man is lawless. He's not keeping the covenant with the most high. Right. There will be a falling away from keeping the commandments of the most high. So this has to happen, according to scripture. In order in order for the day of the most high to come. But what did the most high tell us to do? Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter four and verse two. It says, you shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of your oh, your Allah aim, which I command you. Let's jump down to verse six. It says, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, 
which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this is a great nation and a wise and understanding people. Did you know that the laws in the United States are based upon the Torah? They've been changed a lot. There's been a lot of amendments made because they have gone away from it. But initially, the way that it was established, they tried to mimic a lot of the law, statutes, and commandments. The wisdom in these scriptures, the understanding, because they know that it's wisdom and understanding that's in these scriptures. Why don't you? And if you do, are you teaching others to keep these law, statutes, and commandments? Let's look at verse 7. It says, For what nation is this so great who hath Allah aimed so nigh or close to them as Yahweh Allah aim is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is this so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Only take heed to yourself and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things which your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. But teach them your sons and your sons' sons. So this falling away that's happening has to happen. But this departing will not happen in the new covenant. Let's go to Deuteronomy. It's our last scripture. Let's do the Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 16. It says, And Yahweh said unto Moses, Behold, you shall sleep with your fathers, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them and will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them and hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they shall say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our Allah aim is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have wrought, and that they turned unto other gods so we have departed as a nation you so-called blacks latinos and native americans from the most high's law statutes and commandments i pray that you read the first five books of the bible genesis exodus uh, leviticus numbers deuteronomy and prayerfully consider these law statutes and commandments to keep them in the faith of his son hamashek yal shai that the world knows as Christ, so that you may be redeemed into his kingdom at his coming day of judgment. Shalom.